Game of Thrones season 8 is finally here, and the first episode, in classic fashion, left us with way more questions than answers. So today on Beyond the Screen, we're bringing you our thoughts and theories about the final series of the beloved fantasy show, with our list of the top 10 Game of Thrones season 8 theories. So with that, let's just jump right in. Coming in at 10, Sansa is pregnant with Ramsay Bolton's baby. Now this one is a hit or miss for me, and may have already been debunked, but as we know from previous seasons, time is irrelevant in the world of Game of Thrones. This theory comes from a line Sansa says to Littlefinger about her wedding night to rapist Ramsay. I quote, I can still feel it. I don't mean in my tender heart, it still pains me so. I can still feel what he did in my body, standing here right now. Now as I stated before, this theory hinges on actually how much time has passed between seasons. Ramsay died in season 6, so Sansa would have already been showing in 7, but if the timeline is far more condensed than we realise, this could actually be a legitimate theory. Coming in at 9, Sansa and Gendry end up together. Yeah, hear me out on this one. This theory comes to us from a fan on Reddit and explains the surprising reappearance of Gendry back in season 7. Now, as the Redditor points out, Ned Stark predicted back in season 1 that his daughter would end up with someone strong and wise and brave. Sounds like Gendry to me. He is of noble birth and is the last living Baratheon. He gets along with both Sansa and Arya, and as a blacksmith he has valuable knowledge going into the final battle, and could play a very heroic role as the White Walkers approach. Coming in at 8, Cersei's pregnancy will kill her. As we know, Cersei was prophesied to have three children, all of whom would die before Cersei. However, at the end of season 7, we discover that Cersei is pregnant. Popular theory though is that Cersei was lying about her pregnancy in order to keep Jaime at her side. However, let's consider for a moment that her pregnancy might actually be real. A handful of Redditors have expressed that perhaps Cersei will meet the same end as her mother, aka death and childbirth. In a way it would be very poetic, she would die from her brother, his child would kill her, and the incestuous relationship would have finally won out. Coming in at 7, Melisandre will return with an army to save the day. We last saw Melisandre in season 7 when she shot a threat at Varys before announcing that she was to sail across the narrow sea to Volantis, aka one of the free cities of Essos. However, she went on to state, I quote, I will return to Spider one last time. I have to die in this strange country just like you. As we know, Melisandre comes from Volantis, the same place Kinvara the Red Priestess we met in season 6 also comes from. In that same season, Kimbara met with Tyrion and told him that she believed Daenerys was the princess that was promised. So this theory goes that Melisandre and Kimbara will team up, considering they both believe in Danny's cause. Fans have pointed out that Volantis is guarded by a massive army called the Fiery Hand, which could be very useful in a battle against ice. In at 6, Jon and Daenerys will betray each other. Ok, so in my opinion this is pretty likely, especially considering that Jon has finally learned of his true heritage, and Danny, being the power hungry queen she is, may not be very accepting of this fact. So as we know, Jon and Daenerys have been engaging in some light incest, and their relationship definitely isn't going to be endgame. From previous trailers in the first episode of season 8, we're shown that the union of dragon and wolf is causing a divide amongst the ranks, particularly between Sansa and Jon. If things continue this way, it could lead to an ultimate betrayal. In the book version, Danny is given a prophecy, I quote, Three fires must you light, one for life, and one for death, and one to love. Three Three mounts you must ride, one to bed and one to dread and one to love. Three treasons you will know, once for blood and once for gold and once for love. Now this third betrayal we are patiently waiting on, but perhaps this will be Jon's doing. Now back in season 2, during this scene when Danny is having her vision, King's Landing is empty as she approaches the Iron Throne. However, before she can get there she was interrupted by the cries of her dragons. However, this also sparks an entirely separate theory that perhaps she will abandon her throne to be with her dragons again. In at 5, Daenerys will become the Mad Queen. It's no secret the madness runs through the blood of Targaryens. Danny's father was the Mad King, Aerys II, who the Baratheons revolted against, setting up the era of Westeros we see now. The Mad King killed anyone who was disloyal to him or the crown, and Danny has proven quite recently that she is following in his footsteps, particularly when she torched two Tarly lords for not bending the knee. Now she explicitly states that she cannot and should not be held accountable for the actions of her father. Yeah, here she is, demanding the families of Westeros recognise her power. For many seasons we were blind to her actions, instead revelling in the fact that she is an absolute badass, and a queen that should rule, and more importantly, deserves to rule. She had positioned herself as the unimpeachable leader of the freed, but even she is blind to her own weaknesses. 
We even came face to face with this fact when Tyrion warned her that while atop her dragons, she is vulnerable. Jon also stated to her that using dragons to wage war makes her just like every other mad tyrant who wants to fight for the throne. So perhaps this will be Danny's downfall. She's power hungry and wants nothing more than to rule the Seven Kingdoms. In at four, Arya will use Jamie's face to kill Cersei. I love this theory, and it could be very probable considering everything we've seen leading up to this point. Many fans think that Arya will use her skills as no one to travel to King's Landing and kill Jamie Lannister. But as we know, Jamie is now in Winterfell with all of the Stark, so perhaps she won't have to travel too far in order to do this. Once she kills him, she makes a mask of his face and impersonates him, catching Cersei off guard and finally slaying her. However, considering everyone aside from Cersei is now in Winterfell with the White Walkers quickly approaching, this one seems harder to achieve unless Cersei comes up from the south, which I doubt. In at three, Jon and Daenerys will have a baby. In season seven, we finally watched on as Danny and Jon got it on, and their relationship is still going strong into season eight. While Danny believes that she can no longer have children because of a prophecy that occurred after she sacrificed her newborn baby to save Khal Drogo, however, the prophecy may not be entirely true. According to Tumblr user girl with the ruby slippers, I quote, the third head of the dragon will be Jon and Danny's baby. That's how her womb will quicken. Only death pays for life. Viserion's death will pay for her new child's life. So will Viserion's death pay for the life of a new child? As we know, Targaryens want to keep their bloodline pure, but if they were to have a baby, it would be the product of ice and fire, shedding a new light on the theory of the prince who was promised. Coming in at number two, the Night King will turn the dead Starks into White Walkers. So far, there's been a ton of emphasis on the crypts of Winterfell. Not only in the promos for season 8, but also in the first episode. It is in the crypts that Jon finds out that he is a Targaryen. Now, perhaps this is signifying something significant that will happen in the upcoming episodes. Now, as we know, the war to end all wars is going to be taking place at the Stark's home base, and it's very possible that the Night King may bring back the dead on site as reinforcements. This includes Ned. Rickon, Ramsay Bolton, and maybe even Catelyn. However, if the latter returns, she will come back as Lady Stoneheart, as she did in the books. Now, this theory is supported by one of the trailers leading up to season eight, where we saw Arya running from something in the crypt. Is she being chased by her dead father? Perhaps. And finally, in a number one, Bran started everything. All right, here we go. This is a long one, so buckle in. It's been theorized that the entire plot of Game of Thrones was kicked off way before the series even began with the actions of the Mad King. Reddit user Negative Karma Sniffer believes that Bran might have had more to do with him than fans originally thought. In season six, Bran realizes that the people he's been watching in his visions might actually be able to hear him, and this could perhaps lead him to reasoning with the Mad King. Though Bran is only trying to help, this Redditor believes that Bran's voice is actually the voice the Mad King hears in his head. The ones which made him paranoid and drove him to insanity, thus kicking off the plot of Game of Thrones. However, leading on from this, many think that Bran is actually the Night King. As we know, the Children of the Forest created the White Walkers thousands of years ago in order to protect themselves in a war against the First Men. However, they lost control of them. Now, this theory goes that Bran will attempt to travel back to stop the entire creation, and in doing so, he will accidentally become the Night King himself. Though it's a stretch, let's believe for a second this might be true. That means Bran is trapped inside of a tool that was created to kill, but at the same time he's trying to prevent all of these events from unfolding. One reddit user states, How do you protect life when you know the only thing you can do is bring death, and when you know that, no one has the power to stop you from inflicting it? Destroying the source of the magic that keeps him bound to the curse, the main heart tree at the Isles of the Faces, that is at the centre of all weirwood trees in Westeros, and killing himself by killing Bran. This is why the army of the dead completely turns around and goes back north when the Night King marks Bran, because killing Bran is the priority. Had they known all Westeros people had to do was let the Night King and the White Walkers pass through. As a result, who would be the villain in this scenario? Is it the Night King and the White Walkers that kill tens of thousands so they could stop themselves from endlessly killing life? Or is it Bran and the gang that sent tens of thousands to their death instead of stepping aside like Sam did in his first encounter with the White Walker? One thing is for certain, knowledge would have been their true saviour. Even with the most unlikely kind of people or thing, there may be a common ground. In this case, both the Night King and Jon Snow were fighting for the same cause without even realising it. 
protect the living. Yes, it's crazy, but it wouldn't be a huge shock to find out the monsters are in fact the good guys. Well, there we have it. What do you guys think of these Game of Thrones season 8 theories? Were there any that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and check out our brand new Instagram page, Top 10 Beyond the Screen. Go give us a follow for some behind the scenes content. And until next time, see you later.